I, I would just say that I, you know, I encourage all of you to, you know, reach your own conclusions based on the data and based on your experience. Um, I think that uh, there's sort of two sides to this. We have invested a lot of money and experience in figuring out how to do this well at Alley, and we should be able to take advantage of that at Dunn. Um, it also is the case that a change process doesn't happen in three weeks. It, it can start quickly. It's going to take time. And I think that w it's really important as Dunn goes through a change process that the teachers and counselors and staff here feel supported, not just sort of, uh, you know, sort of go get them, but, you know, dollars and programs and professional development and so forth. And that we should be interested not just in moving policy, but in ensuring that all of that foundation gets Built. Um, so that's what I would say. Good, good time. Also, we have a board member here tonight. And we do have a board member here tonight, but um, Barbara Klausner has joined us. Barbara is also a dental parent. Let's not put her on the spot. No. <laughs> um, Maria, I'll, I'll get Maria Lehman, did you have a question? One of my family, yeah, last year, she was in I was not planning to be speaking, but uh, hearing all about how uh, the uh, teaching advisory works, it just makes me remember uh, that my, I have three children who went to them. Uh, my daughter was here, and I have two other kids. And I knew the system was not working for my kids because sometimes they came saying, Mom, I went to speak to the counselor, and I waited and waited all my lunch. And when it was about my turn, the, a person came and said, I'm sorry, you have to go back to school, you can do it. They needed to change classes. So at that moment I thought, well, it's just changing a class. But when I got really, really concerned is when the second kid died and I got really worried about my kids because they had already missed a friend. So I went to look for them and I couldn't find them. So I went myself to look for a counselor and there was nobody in the office. I was like, I need to speak to a counselor because I knew my kids knowing that there is so much time, they couldn't be going if they get help. So I wanted to talk to the counselor and say, please go look for my kids, make sure they're okay. So I go in and say, I need to talk to my kids and my kids were about to come. And the person at the front said, uh, they are busy because we have an emergency. I said, that's why I'm here, because the emergency. And they said, well, they had a meeting. And if you want to, you're going to have to wait a long time. I said, that's okay, I'll wait. So while I was waiting, kids went inside and said, I need a counselor, I need a counselor. And the person said, they had the meeting, they went out. Another kid came, I need a counselor, I need a counselor. They had the meeting, you gotta go back. So three kids were thrown back. So imagine if teacher advisory works, it has to work a lot more when there's crisis like this. I just felt so bad for those kids because they didn't come out like I did. And I said to the front desk person, I need to talk to the counselor, and I'm not leaving. So they went and called her, and they, they did it. They, they came and talked to me, but the kids who didn't do it. So if we had had a counselor system, it would have been a lot better. Thank you. Freshman. 
And I had a comment and a question on this discussion. The comment was, this was the first time when I got a letter from Amy that I even realized there was this completely different system at Pali. So my, and then I saw the differences and I realized that a lot of parents I talked to don't even know there is a difference. So when you want our support, I think maybe sending this particular survey something to every parent in Ghana might be really helpful because I as a parent was so shocked that I dropped everything and I said I'm coming here today. And so, <laughs> so that was my one element about just lack of knowledge. And the second thing is you mentioned about support raising money and fund. Now what is it that Bali has extra that they are able to afford it that Gum can't? Um. So on the first one, I mean, I have to say, when I was, when my children were young, I really didn't understand the difference in models of Pali, and I think that is a big issue that, you know, we, we don't understand that. Pali spends a couple hundred thousand dollars more per year on counseling, according to the consultant's report. It's a little hard, I think, to understand exactly how these budgets work, um, <laughs> honestly. Um, but there's a, um, you know, Pali has chosen to invest somewhat more in its guidance program than Gun has. I think that as part of the change that's being talked about, I expect that those funding differences will equalize. It's hard to imagine that they won't. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised to see Gun spending somewhat more on, on counseling over the next you know, four or five years to manage this transition. And if I had something to encourage folks here to say to the school board, it's, you know, we ought to be willing to put some extra dollars into making change that works better for students. My name is Herbert Morton. Um, I'm here in a sense representing PTA, not just for Palo Alto, but I serve on the board of PTA at the county level, and I've served on the state PTA board managers also. Um, so I actually have a question mostly for Denise, because she's a researcher here. Um, I love seeing this data, and it's really nice to see extreme differences among two schools that in many respects are really comparable. A lot of the potential confusion gets washed out. Um, but, I'm, but I also know that, how, that California as a whole uh, is, I believe, it's either 49th or 50th among the states in the, the ratio of counselors to students. And I'm wondering where Palo Alto is with respect to the rest of the state or the rest of the county, or whether such data exists. And you know, I don't need a detailed answer now. I'll take my answer off the air. <laughs> but um, but I'm, I'm thinking, not obviously, I want to think about the student, our students here. Um, but I also want to think about the 6.2 million K-12 students statewide and the younger students who are going to be talking about through these systems because we want to do the best replicate them, as someone said, best practices uh, throughout the state. Yeah, I know. That's why, that's why I'm giving it to you. Okay. 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 Denise, did you want to respond to that? Well, I mean, the really super quick answer is yes, you can check. You can find out. You can see the postings of um, counselor to student ratio, and then we count teacher advisors in that. Um, we are, like I said, I work with schools that have a 1 to 1,000 ratio. So a one to three hundred is, is is infinitely better. You know, we want to keep making that number smaller and smaller so that more kids can get the attention they need. That's the that's the quick answer. Well, I can, I can just supplement that by saying Cali right now has maybe one to forty. Cali has one to forty. Gun has one to three hundred twenty-five. So that's where we are on the ground at the moment in Palo Alto. And I think one of the advantages of advisory, I'm sure Denise would agree with me, is that it leverages the population of teachers in order to make more advisors available to kids. That's the real advantage. Particularly more in counseling. a post-prop post -pro 13 lack of funding environment, it's great to be able to do that. Okay, there was another question. Um, while you're coming up, can we get your question? Um, so I have uh, three children, two that have gone through um, John and um, John and um, I have two comments. Two, I think the difference in the funding is that um, Gunn had chosen to 
sizes of their English classes with that extra money. Um, and my question is, um, I'm concerned about the training, and I'm sort of wondering what kind of training the TAs have, say, at Cali. Um, and I think that um, what Timmy said is very important to have the buy-in. So I'm, I'm a little concerned about thrusting a model on gun, but I, I'm very curious about what kind of training the, um, the Cali TAs have. So I, mean, I don't actually know the training that the Pali TAs have, but I can tell you that when you thrust any model onto a school, it's not going to work as well. So that's why we talk about this collaborative process, the buy-in, and to answer Steve's question, it, it's going to take longer than three weeks, because at the very, very basic level, you need to train, you need to recruit and train the advisors, and that takes some time. Um, so I, I don't know enough about the Pali uh, training system, but I can tell you that there are some very good professional development um, providers out there to train advisors. Well, does anyone here know how the Pali teams are chosen, or they volunteer? They volunteer. I know a little bit about it. Well, it just seems like a lot to. I think it would be helpful to think about leading and training rather than forcing and thrusting. Um, you know, some of the language around this is um, not the language I would choose. I would choose to think about leading, training, supporting, and um, meeting the need for professional development. Um, so Pali teacher advisors volunteer. They usually have many more volunteers than they're able to accept into the program. It's selective. Um, there was a concern when Pali TA started 20 years ago that people would not sign up, but they were oversubscribed the first year. Um, the teachers go through an extensive professional development curriculum. They receive extensive training. They have uh, summer professional development workshops. They have, they have summer professional well, development workshops. No, they have um, other trainings that they participate in. And they also have a well-developed guidance curriculum that they utilize and that they all share. They also have a, uh, in addition to the 46 TAs, they have a head TA who uh, helps to guide, support, train, and nurture the 46 TAs. So they have an infrastructure. Um, obviously, you can't get an infrastructure like that overnight. They've had it for 20 years. But, um, but you can... Uh, you can deploy. Do you have a feel for the, um, the gun staff? Is there that willingness there? I can't speak about that. Well, I can just say, I want to say one thing about that. And they have done this year, tried to start taking one of one because of the class of freshmen know about this. And they were able to recruit 25 teachers to do that. They didn't get stipends, I don't believe. They didn't go through any kind of training. But there was a willingness, even at, I mean, at very experimental level. So I, I think that there is no evidence to indicate <coughs> that it wouldn't be well done. Certainly some teachers aren't going to want to do it. We don't want, they shouldn't do it if they don't want to do it. We want teachers who want to do it. And I think probably um, unofficially, there's teachers who are serving this role anyway. Those few teachers who okay. really connect well with their students, they're doing it. Untrained, uncompensated. So. Thank you. Thank you for the my name is Rachel. I have two children that are at Tumba, and I just heard about this thing. And uh, there is one question that I don't understand. When Gun had several suicides a few years ago, uh, did this question come up that, that those kids had nowhere to go? They could not find their contact to have that? If it, if it did, why uh, we are still talking about this right now? It's been several years. Uh, we could interested 
parents could attend the board meeting on, in June, perhaps. Um, again, not from the outside, so until recently, I wouldn't even have known that parents could attend a board meeting. So be careful. <laughs> Your assumptions, if you're from here, might not be true because of those immigrants here. And so I agree with that lady's comments. That it's very important to tell people what the situation is, what options you have. Don't assume that everyone knows that they can go to a board meeting or write to a board member, for example. I think it would benefit to get that message out if that's a, a worthwhile step. And are there other steps that parents can take to, to increase the rate of change? Because this pace we're going now is pretty slow from what I read of the timeline. Um, Amy, do you want to? We, we do have a uh, next steps. Do you want to talk about it? Or do you... um, I, well, we don't have any time. Sure. One more question. We should have some more questions. Yeah, for, uh, let's, let's come back to that because that is important. Last year, we actually had a question. She, oh, we classed, but we didn't answer. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. There's a question. This, this right Did you have a question? Yes. Yeah, the question. Oh, no, okay. She, she that was it? Okay. Did we answer your question? No. No. I'm sorry. I mean, I think that the, I think we're in a process where we're focusing more on the social and emotional needs of kids, and I think the Project Safety Net is part of that. P8, which talks about an advisory among other things, which is a, uh, the suicide prevention part of the Project Safety Net plan is something that is, you know, sort of alive. I think that's helping this discussion. I also think that um, decision-making, you know, it benefits from that focus, but it also it get, has gotten a little um, bound up with it, too. I mean, I, I think that there's a lot of emotion and pain around these issues, and I think that that has, you know, sort of accelerated in some ways and slowed down in, in others. Um, I, I think it would be incorrect to assume that nothing's been done. Um, on a campus as, as far as um, post tension um, Again, I don't speak for Project Safety Net, but I do know um, we had a, a, an enormous response from gun teachers uh, when sources of strength was uh, proposed and is embedded and, and in gun right now. A lot of teachers and kids are working together to make those kinds of connections. Um, the teacher advisory issue, I think, has really come to the fore with the uh, the data that's come out, and uh, but I think that it, it's not the only response. Does that make sense? Uh, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see one more request because I know that. Uh, uh, okay. Did you want to? No, I just I want to. That maybe somebody else knows the answer to this, but but to assume that the kids who died by suicide were not connected. It's not a safe assumption. We don't know. Hopefully, we will know. But we can't assume that it's because the counseling system is wrong. And there have been suicides that have occurred at Cali in the TA system and the TA system for many years. I hope you are safe to be my friend. Thank you. My name is Amy Balsam. Um, I have two kids at John, a senior and a freshman. Um, so, any questions you might have about personally about what, especially the freshman parents who are here, I can answer what it is like to be at GUN. Um, I think this has been a great um, venue for enlightenment, discussion, education. I think this is a problem. Most parents don't know there's a difference. Parents who have had five kids go through GUN don't know that there's a difference between the two schools. Um, so a lot of, I think, what we need to do is share the information, do more education, Charlene sort of, you know, push against the sort of assumption that, that there's some bad vibe out there that's ruined gun in some way. We're trying to really improve the school and really serve our kids um, in a much more effective way. Um, I think it's important to talk about this, talk with your friends, share the information, write to your board members, absolutely. Let the gun administration, let Tasha and Tom know that you're supportive of change and will support them in making change. I think that's really important. Um, go to the We Can Do Better website. There's just a wealth of information. Read the comments from both bodies. 
Um, the comments are, are very enlightening. Um, look at the data. Um, there's also a link there to the Educators for Social Responsibility. That's one of the um, sites that Denise mentioned. There's another one. To learn about the differences in advisory systems. There are differences. We don't have to, I love what the woman said about the panel. We don't have to take the panel model in, you know, whole because there are problems with it. Let's take that and improve on it. But we need to move, and we need to move quickly. Because if we let the district do what it usually does, it will be two more years, and we still don't have any changes. So with that, I just hope, I really encourage you all to share the information and get your friends and family members to be engaged.